keep saying, where are your magnetism videos at? And it's like, well, I've been busy. That doesn't mean I haven't been working on my book. Um, oh, this little toy. It's called a Toro Flux. You can get it for like 20 bucks on eBay. It's basically a Taurus. Um, most amazing thing in the universe magnetism because 100 percent of the universe is defined by magnetism 100 percent of the air in the proverbial balloon that defines volume is magnetism magnetodielectricity this very day called magnetism the dielectric field the conjugate nature of the universe is so far as force and motion inertia and acceleration everything that defines any interaction which is not particle based because everything are fields and fields are not particles unlike the idiocy of quantum mechanics capacitance resistance permeability and permittivity I grew up with uh, liquid nitrogen flask that's like that's what I wanted for Christmas when I was 13 it's like what do you want for Christmas at age 13 I want a liquid nitrogen doer flask at which I experimented with uh, so-called superconductors, yttrium, barium, copper oxide, and neodymium iron boron. I was like, wow, watch it levitate. How does it work? Nobody knows. Well, that's superconductivity. Well, that's no such thing. The actual ceramic disk undergoes extremely low temperature. It basically becomes a force field that does not let magnetic force divergence enter or permeate it because everything is low magnetic permeability. So it becomes a barrier to magnet magnetic permeability. So it's not superconducting anything. It's becoming an extremely low magnetic permeability uh, ceramic disk at the temperature of liquid. See, everything in science that we were taught is absolute bullshit. We think we're so advanced with our computers and our digital cameras and our Boeing jets and humanity has not even evolved to the point to understand the fundamental principles of the universe you have assholes chasing uh, unicorn particles with multi-billion dollar colliders it has nothing to do with results it has to do with getting grants and money and money money so they have a job you know year after year yeah we're gonna look for a new particle now we just need a few billion more dollars absolutely amazing absolutely amazing I know one thing for absolute certainty the fat bald tattooed guy who spent half a lifetime trying to figure out uh, fundamental fields and forces finally has have I said I figured out everything no but one thing I can absolutely assert and I don't have to assure you of anything I don't give a damn what you believe you know that's the wonderful thing about wisdom you see this is what people do in religion and other bullshit too to make themselves feel fulfilled, they have to convince you of the bullshit that they believe in. And that pumps them up emotionally and otherwise. The wonderful thing about true discovery and wisdom is that it is its own reward. You don't need anybody to confirm it. You don't have to you don't you don't give a shit if anybody believes it. And nobody is their beliefs. I'm not interested in beliefs either. I'm not even interested in my own beliefs. I'm only interested in the truth. It's like, well, that's what you believe. I'm not even interested in what I believe either, goddammit. Much less what you believe. I'm only interested in the truth. And I'm certain of one thing. And it is not a statement of hubris or egotism. Is that I am the first person on earth to figure out how magnetism works, why it works, the reciprocating processional hyperboloid, Mother Nature's line of force divergence, which of course does not exist in one dimension, as a human being would want, wantfully draw a line like this or like this. Well, that's a human being making a line. Well, Mother Nature doesn't work that way. Mother Nature's line is not only like this, it is like this, but it is not only not just like this, which is only two-dimensional. We also have to extrapolate it out into more additional dimensions like this but not just like this like this so we now have curvilinear divergence but there is no end point and there is no start point in what defines magnetism you see what you see here you see a toroid here but what you don't see is you don't see the negative image of the torus which is the hyperboloid hourglass shape that's the negative image of a donut the negative image of a donut is a hyperboloid that conjugate relationship this toroid 
is the geometry of force and motion and the creation of space. See, space is not a thing. It doesn't have any properties. This is where Einstein fundamentally is a goddamn idiot. And Nikola Tesla was right. Nikola Tesla even called Einstein an idiot for reifying space. What does reification mean? That's like some crazy person who spent their entire life believing in unicorns. Like, yeah, I just saw a unicorn down the street. Reification. If you don't know what reification is, go look it up. Tesla said that space has absolutely no properties. Of course, he's correct. So, we have a conjugate geometry. Except one geometry is not visible. And the reason it's not visible because it is the trans-Euclidean geometry of hyperspace, inertia, counterspace, the ether. I don't care what you call it. Mother Nature doesn't give a shit about names. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Have you ever heard that one before? I don't care if you call a rose a stink muffin. It'll still smell like a rose, right? So I don't give a damn what sort of names you... Names are conventions. They are existential contrivances created by stupid human beings. And I don't give a shit about names. I only care about the truth. And the truth is universal. And it is pre-existential. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. So the conjugate nature of the universe is as far as the hyperboloid and the torus, which defines force and motion, inertia and acceleration, which defines the hyperboloid. Me, I have, and people, every time I say something like this, people say, no, no, you didn't discover it first. You know, Tesla does, you know, I have all of Tesla's writings, except for the stuff that the government stole, which is confirmed, of course. Uh, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, none of those people, even uh, Walter Russell, even Victor Schauberger, none of those people said what I, I, I've said in my book, even in the current third edition. They never defined magnetism, you know. Now, I have stood on the shoulders of those giants and seen much further, but I know that I could croak whatever point in time in the distant future or the near future, knowing that I'll be the first person to have discovered what magnetism is, the fundamental principle of the universe, as far as the first human being. And I don't need anybody's validation of that. I don't need it, and I don't even want it. I don't care. You know what I wrote that book for? I didn't wrote that book for... I didn't wrote that book. <laughs> it's a late night. I didn't write that book for prestige or acknowledgement or anything else. I wrote it for me because it was my discovery. Nobody else's. Um, did I use the, some of the awesome works of some other people to come to that conclusion? Because everybody had a piece here and a piece here, but nobody saw the whole picture. Yeah, that's undeniable. I never would have got there without uh, Eric Dollard uh, per, uh, perpetually uh, insisting uh, that one of his exact phrases in one of his lectures in one of his books is, uh, he says, you'll never understand field theory or electricity without understanding counter space. And oh shit, is he right? He's absolutely right. I never would have got there without understanding some of the principles of Steinmetz and Heaviside and Tesla. But I have the full picture. And I can actually see what's going on. And the amazing thing is that it is so simple and yet so incredibly abstruse. There's another word you should learn, abstruse, to explain to people. It's like, what is reciprocating processional hyperboloid? Well, let's first extrapolate out a five-dimensional uh, force divergence. And not only does it exist along this dimension, which is Mother Nature's line, like this, but also like this. And since it has no beginning and ending point, it therefore must take the lowest pressure mediation to self-terminate where it began. There is no beginning or end. It's like, oh my God, now we're going to talk about the infinity symbol. So, we only have this, two dimensions, three dimensions, fourth dimension, and the fifth dimension. Fifth Pythagorean solid, there we go. The hyperboloid. See, what you see here is a donut, or a torus. But what you don't see is a negative image that defines this. You see, what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, well, that's the unsolvable riddle. Now, this is easily solvable. Which came first, the hyperboloid or the torus? They both came at the same time. However, the torus is counter space, so it, became, it came first. But it didn't come first because coming first is a temporal expression. So it didn't come first in any sense. It was always there. It is the 
fundamental substrate which predates anything that is mentioned as become or as existing or having a locus, a Cartesian locus. All of this stuff is so simple. And I know you've heard this before, and it is really true, and I can tell you this firsthand, and you don't have to believe me, and I don't give a damn if you do believe me. I absolutely do not give a damn. Is that all of it collectively together, in the great summation and the great picture of the entire forest, and not a bunch of people looking at the little goddamn trees, is so simple. It's not only so simple, it's so simple it couldn't even exist any other way. And every time I, I'm always thinking about it, and now the picture is completely clear, and it has been now for quite some time. And by the way, I have over 200 pages of notes for my fourth, fifth, and sixth edition of the book. And each page of note is extremely condensed, meaning each page basically translates into five pages. It's so very simple, and it's so incredibly clear. You remember that movie bit from the movie 2010? where he encounters the old guy who turns into the baby, who turns into the old guy again. And he's like, what's going to happen? It's like something wonderful. And the, the old guy who's a transcended space and time, he's like, it's all very clear to me now. And, you know, the other guy has no idea what the, what the hell he's talking about. He's like, you know, it's all very clear to me now. <laughs> I know what that feeling's like. <laughs> You can't even express it to someone else because they don't even have the dictionary intellectually. Not saying they're stupid. I'm not meaning that. I mean, they don't even have a proper frame of reference. It's like telling the turtle about what it's like swimming in the water. Well, the turtle has never even set foot in the water. You, you can't even talk about the water. to the It's impossible. There's a total disconnect there that all the talk in the world, blah, 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 you know, won't relate it. It just doesn't get you there. Or as the ancient Chinese saying goes, talk not cook rice. So the one thing I'm most proud of is the fact that I am the first human being to figure out the fundamental principle of the cosmos. And you think that's really egotistical bullshit. And you know what? I'll just laugh and I'll go, I don't give a damn because no greater pride and joy or happiness has ever dawned upon my fat ass. I wasn't always fat. I used to be really skinny. Uh, than this complete picture. And not only that, I worked really hard for it. And uh, all the stuff that you take for granted, you know, I like put that aside. All the stuff that people enjoy and take for granted, you know. I had to sacrifice that to figure out this great thing. But I wanted to know this great thing more than anything else. And I'm fully confident, 100%, because everything that I understand about it now is absolutely mirrored in everything else. It is ir irrefutable, undeniable, it is irreducible abstruse, I mean, abstract uh, simplicity uh, without uh, subdivision. In other words, it is the agathon in the ancient Greek. It would be the agathonic, ag it would be agathonic uh, conjugate. It's so, so very simple. It's, it's incredibly simple. And uh, just because I haven't made any videos lately on magnetism doesn't mean I'm not working hard on it. So I really wished everybody could see what I see as far as the big picture on what it is and how it works. Because people get like a glimpse here and a glimpse there and they'll have a flash. But the entire thing is so absolutely simple. It really is. So I droned on a little bit unnecessarily, but uh, I wanted to talk about the conjugate principle of the torus and the hyperboloid and what they define. I mean, ultimately, since everything is fields and fields are not particles, and ultimately, if you understand how fields work and what they are, you see, no branch of science has ever defined a field. Once you can do that, then everything really becomes so clear. Once you can piece it all together, you can see the entire picture. And it's all absolute lucid, like a lake on a uh, still morning, where everything is absolute glass. It's transparent and, and visible out to infinity. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I am working diligently on the fourth edition of my book. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. You can tell me to jump off a cliff, but the truth is, it doesn't matter. 
because the joy of knowing surpasses absolutely everything. Goodbye.